Anyway, I'm going to talk about holistic risk management, enterprise risk management. It's something different, something that a lot of farmers don't think about, don't do regularly. It's outside of my comfort zone, too. You know, I'm an economist. Numbers, futures and options, capital price insurance. That's, that's my view of risk management. That's how I learned risk management. When I went back to university, that's what it was. Futures, options, insurance, those kind of things. But there's actually more to risk management than just, just that. So we're going to stand back and look at the whole farm risk management and uh, look at words, you know, qualitative stuff rather than just, just numbers. So hopefully I won't put you to sleep. Yesterday I had two guys up in the front. And, yeah, we'll, we'll try and pick it up a little bit. So, first part of the presentation is going to be a little dry. The whole thing might be a little dry. But just want to give you a little bit of logic and some background information. And uh, just talk about a few of the concepts because they really are new and it's, it's kind of important to grasp some of these things. And I want to describe a fairly simple process that you might be able to use on your own farm, your own business. Something simple. You're already doing it. You're doing it in your head. You know, older generation, you know, we do this kind of stuff all the time. We're always thinking about risks. And, but the world has changed. It's a bigger world. There's more things influencing our business and the outcomes of our business. So uh, we need a little bit more bigger picture approach to risk management. And the last part of it, presentation, and I'll try and skip there as fast as I can. Just a hypothetical example farm, and just kind of run through some of the things that uh, might happen. So, key messages, hopefully you take home this, and you probably realize it, risk is anywhere in your operation. It's not just prices, it's not just yields, you know, it's not just farm safety. Risk is everywhere, uncertainty is everywhere. But risk has two dimensions, it's the good side, upside opportunities, and the downside risk. Traditionally, we think of risk as something bad happening. Um, and you know, I'll be honest, a lot of my presentation is downside risk, because risk is that other dimension that we tend not to think about. You know, it's always there. Like as farm managers, we like to raise cows, and we like to produce. You know, our number one objective is bigger calves, more revenue, you know, increase our revenue. Number two, cut our costs, you know, manage our costs. So those are, those are two of our objectives, make money. But in behind all that is the other objective. It's, it's just hidden in there. We need to stay in business. Those of us older that have been around you know, in the uh, 80s, even through BSE, you know, Having a plan to stay in business is critical. Back to the 80s. Those were good times. I grew up in the 70s. Lindsay wasn't even born. We were kids. We had snowmobiles, played hockey. No, life was good. Everything was going good. All the prices were good. There was ups and downs, but we had inflation. My dad bought a John Deere 4430 tractor. Sold it, traded it off two years later, and got more than you paid for it. You know, it didn't matter what you touched, you know, it made money. You know, kind of like the cattle business in the last couple of years. You know, it, it's all good. But unfortunately, like in the 80s, you know, things happen that we can't predict. Uncertainty. Uh, back then it was government policy. You know, national energy program. You know, government fiscal policies. Interest rates go through the roof. Well, when you're a young family starting out with lots of debt, you know, those are big things. So, this is what we want to get to, that objective of staying in business. And the other one, being able to sleep at night. I guess the last message is, all risk can be managed. You know, there's, 
There are ways to manage every risk. So, definitions. Purdue University, you know, these guys have been researching this for a long time. These guys know what they're doing. You know, why do we want to talk about risk management? Because it's important. You know? These guys know. You know. Key to success is manage your risk. And they also realize that key to success is having a holistic or whole fire risk management process, more than just prices and yields. So that's what we're going to try and get at. And uh, just so you know, I'm not blowing smoke. You know, it's 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 the guys. It's the PhDs. It's it's the guys that really know and understand this stuff. Another thing, Farm Management Canada just did this survey. Ipsos did the survey. Seven things successful managers do. Rick is going to talk about all this later on in this presentation. He's going to tie all this stuff together and uh, give you some re really useful stuff for your business plan. But I'm just going to focus on this one thing that really showed up in their survey, that uh, successful managers do a risk assessment. So I'm going to run through that in this example. It used to be back in the 80s, or even in the BSE, this, this was the risk management plan. And uh, I don't think this works too well anymore. You know, we've, we've got some tools, and uh, I'm not sure uh, you know, yelling help is, is going to be the answer. And uh, you lenders in the crowd, I don't know if you want this kind of answer in your business plans when people come to borrow money. You know, I'm guessing you want something a little bit more uh, detailed and, and uh, focused. So. I hesitate to put this up, but we need to be on the same page as knowing what risk really is. You know, if you search the internet, there's all kinds of different definitions, but uh, risk is essentially an uncertain event. You know, election in the US, you know, Brexit in Europe, an uncertain event that has a positive or negative effect on your business. The keyword is positive too. Those positive things are important to recognize and analyze just as well as the negative side. But essentially risk just boils down to uncertain things, risk events that matter to your farm. Like there's lots of wild stuff going on around the world. You know, we get all, all cranked about the election and you turn on CNN and you know, the other guys are, you know, it's just nonstop crap. But does it really matter? Maybe, maybe not. Everybody's different. You know, if you're a farmer with a large, uh, a large portfolio of stocks and bonds and stuff, you know, you know that market volatility, that uncertainty that the election has, you know, it might really affect, you know, the way you do your business. Whereas other people, maybe not. But going through the process of identifying these things, risk events, and um, seeing them, if they really matter to you, it's it's important, and that's key to the process. And of course, risk management, you know, there's a ton of different definitions. In my view, it's just determining how best to handle those risks. You know, cattle prices, you know, we're getting a little better with futures and options and got some tools now, but it's how do we deal with all these other risks? Which leads to you know, two of the types of risks. Strategic risk, operational risk. Here again, you'll hear different consultants, different People, everybody's got different definitions. At Bird Ag, we tend to just boil things right down to simple things. Strategic risk, you know, that's the stuff you're putting in your business plan. That's your, you know, your plan going forward, the strategies. Essentially doing the right things. Whereas operational risk, on the other hand, is doing things right. People will talk about financial risk. You know, it's critical. Two farms side by side, exactly the same management, same production system. One has high debt load, the other one doesn't. One has more financial risk. Financial risk is just risk compounded by leverage, debt. So it's key to recognize that here at the start because when we get down to the end and look at strategies, treatments for dealing with risk, you know, dealing with debt is probably the number one solution. One way to really reduce 
risk to a level where we can sleep at night and keep us in business. So. Holistic risk management is essentially enterprise risk management. Now, if you Google enterprise risk management, you'll find a whole bunch of stuff. It's, it's a well-known process. It's kind of mandatory in some of the bigger companies. All bigger companies, public companies, have some kind of an enterprise risk management framework. You know, they'll have a room full of people like this working in their risk management department. And, uh, you yeah, know, they look at you know, big companies, different, different positions they have in the companies. The key is it's an established process. It's a science. And we don't hear about it much in agriculture. You know, my former colleague, Ted Darling, I don't know if you remember him, he was a uh, widely respected DA risk management specialist with Alberta Ag. Him and Dean Dick were involved in uh, some early work in this area, did some real detailed stuff, and uh, nobody's really picked it up. But it's there, and it is really applicable to agriculture. So, what does it boil down to? It's just a simple process. There's consultants. Consultants make a lot of money on this stuff. But really, it boils down to you know, a simple four-step process. And hopefully, this, you can take this home and, and kind of deal with it in your, in your own operation. Determining the context, well, that's pretty basic. Today's example, we're going to look at risk management in the whole farm, the context of the whole farm. It doesn't have to be the whole farm. It can be your cow-calf enterprise. It can be your green farm enterprise. It can be your anything. Determine the context. Identifying risks. That's key. You do it all the time. You watch the news, you read, you watch social media. You're identifying risks. And not just downside risks, you're identifying opportunities. That's even more important sometimes. You know, when prices are down, like the markets are now, there could be a lot of opportunities. You know, it's a good time to look for opportunities. Assess the risk. How big are they? Is this something that's going to take us out of business? Something we really need to worry about? And of course, dealing with them, implementing strategies. That's the fun part. Another key part is this monitor, review, and repeat. You know, what I'm talking about is an ongoing culture in your farm, your family. You know, it's it's communication. It's it's talking about this stuff. You know a coffee every month or a couple months. You know, it's, it's an ongoing process. Seeing what's new, what, what might fly in from left field and affect us. You know, we just don't want to listen to the, the coffee shop. We want to review it continually. Step one, risk identification. Like I said, you can do it through social media, the news, talking to neighbors at the coffee shop. But it's, it's the, the important part, opportunities and risks. Here's a technique, and uh, Dean's used this a lot more than I have. Um, your family, your employees sitting around the table. Everybody's got a different perspective. Break down three risks, five risks that you see. Pass the paper off to the next person. Put down five new risks. And keep going until you get your paper back. All of a sudden, you have, end up with a whole list of risks. Just an easy way. It's a good practice to get into. Yep. What are you guys seeing? What's, you know, is there a bad fence out there? The bulls are going to get out and you know, get killed on the highway. You know, little things. Little things, big things. Yep. A little thing like a broken fence can, can be big. Once you get a list of stuff, you know, write it down on a piece of paper. Typically, in the industry, they call it a risk register. If you Google enterprise risk management, this is a key part of it. This is a little spreadsheet that it's not on open the web yet, but it will be shortly. Just a little list. Describe the risk, you know, the broken fence, the future election. You know, should we be doing something? 
after you make a list, figure out what's the probability of that risk happening. Weak fence, what's the probability of the cows getting out onto the four lane highway and killing a bunch of people? You know, having a big loss. Is it low? Maybe, maybe not. What's the probability of uh, another border closure for some unknown thing? Low, high. Nobody knows those probabilities. That's why we use words and small numbers instead of actual probabilities. You know, here we're using quantitative measures. Quali sorry, qualitative measures, you know, words, high, medium, low, that kind of thing. What you think is a high risk may not be a high risk to somebody else. So it's important that you know, your perception of that risk you know, gets recorded. It's, you, know, you understand it. Now, quantitative stuff, that's the stuff I like. And that's the stuff my niece Lindsay and the rest of the bankers in the world like. You know, financial statements and ratios, you know, they're great tools, they're great measurements, you know, but they're easy. Financial and statistical models, cattle price insurance, fun stuff, but it doesn't capture the whole picture. So once we get the risks identified, how big is the impact? What's the probability? Rate from one to five and fill in the, the blank. Pretty simple. And then draw them on a map. Here again, this is just a, just a, a risk map. You'll see all kinds of them if you Google enterprise risk management. So here I've got 10 risks. Some of them are high impact, high likelihood. These ones over in the top right corner, Eight, one, and three. Those are the ones that can take us out of business. Those are the big ones. So we need to try and find strategies to reduce the impact and likelihood of those things happening. Or maybe we avoid them. We want to reduce the impact of these five and six. Try and get them down into the bottom left-hand corner. So this is just a visual representation of all the risks that you've identified and put numbers on. Just an automatic way of saying, okay, we need to be watching those. Number nine and 10, low likelihood, low risk. Do we need to worry about them? Probably not. But it's important that they're there and it's important that we do this systematically and keep doing it every month. Because you know, maybe, maybe that risk number 10 jumps up higher. Maybe we need to have another look at it. So that's the systematic, continuous logic here. So some of the main risk treatments, risk management strategies, avoid it. When I say everything, every risk can be managed, you know, one of the main strategies is maybe we just avoid it or accept it. Some, some of those low risk, low likelihood things, we just need to accept it. You know, there's no way we're going to reduce, reduce the risk to zero. We don't want to reduce the risk. You know, if it's a low risk business, you know, what's the return? You know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So we just want to minimize it, the whole farm risk to something that's acceptable, you know, something that'll let us sleep at night. Common risk treatments, I'm not going to go through the whole list. We all know them. Um, Lots and lots of different ways we can deal with deal with risk. You know, production risk. We can you know, do a better job on grazing, managing our, our grazing to manage some of our production costs and our risks of drought and those effects on us. We can buy crop insurance. We can do different land leasing arrangements. All kinds of strategies. You know, financial risk, of course, deals with debt. Manage your debt, shop around for better interest rates, manage your interest rates if, if you see that interest rates is a risk to your business. Geez, if we could have done that back in the 80s, we'd been laughing. But market risk, there you go. We're starting to get some tools now that work pretty good. Futures, options, contracts. You know, there's, there's different things, different combinations of things that we can do. And of course, the human risk, that's a pretty short list because I couldn't think of much because I'm of the older generation where uh, you know, 
We didn't really think of that kind of stuff, but it's important. So once we get the risks all listed and evaluated, we figure out what controls or mitigations, what strategies can we fit to each one of those risks. And then reassess it again at the very end clock. Okay, after we do this, what does that look like? Does that minimize the risk to an acceptable level? Well, we draw another map and we try and move those risks in. It's a pretty simple process. You know, people can make it complex, but really it's a simple process. It's a simple process that, that you do all the time in your heads anyway. But for business planning, long-term planning, for communication amongst your family, write it down on a piece of paper. You know, talk about it. You know, that's the critical point. You know, all this fancy stuff, numbers and charts. You know, the key point is write it down, talk about it, and keep talking about it. Keep the dialogue open so you know, the things that keep me awake at night, because you know, I'm old and gray hair, may not be the things that keep the younger generation, you guys. You, know, you guys might see different risks than that we do. But, you know, we can't forget, you know, when I was growing up, we started in the early 80s, interest rates were going up, and uh, my dad was expanding the farm to include two family members, and uh, this old guy, you know, bib overalls and snooze hanging out of his mouth, and, Stop it. You guys are crazy building that feedlot. Borrow money, you can't do it, you're gonna go broke. And, you know, of course the seventies everything was good. You know. We were young. We didn't see any bad times, but you know, these guys did. You know, they lived through the thirties. You know. We never even heard of it, you know. But you know they were right. You know? Things happen and when you get into debt, bad things happen. And worse. So so critical that you know, my perception of risk is different than my kids, yours. So we need to talk about it, get it on the table. Okay, the example, hypothetical example. Come out of my head. It's pretty scatterbrained and there's lots of stuff going on. So it's, it's very simple. I've gone through and in this hypothetical farm in my mind, <coughs> I picked out 10 risks that I see, different kinds of things. In no particular order, death of an owner or family member. And I said it's you know, pretty high impact, pretty high likelihood, you know, death is pretty certain. Um, what happens? You know, somebody dies, diminished management. You know, dad dies, and you know, we lose his experience, his ability to manage the farm. But Everybody has insurance for that. And most succession plans have some life insurance, so we can carry on. Yeah, what if one of your kids dies? You need to talk about this kind of stuff because there's different things that can happen. You know, your spouse. Those are major things. You lose a kid, your life changes forever. Your, your, the way you manage your business changes. Those are big things. And like I mentioned earlier on in some of the definition stuff, all of these risks can be interrelated. Here again, I'll use death in the family as, a, as a, an example. Death in the family, well, all of a sudden your probability of divorce goes way up. So we all work together. We heard about divorce you know, in the succession plan. You know, it's, it's a big deal. You know, it's a big risk to the ongoing <coughs> operation. So, other things, you know, droughts, we all deal with droughts. Border closures. Anyway, these are, these are some of the risks that I see in my head, and I've just put hypothetical numbers down as far as impact, likelihood. Then I've just drawn them on this map. Like I say, it's just a little spreadsheet. So the big ones that I'm worried about for this hypothetical farm are border closures. You know, pretty low likelihood, but when it happens, you know, it's a big impact. So 
How do we deal with that? Prices, you know, that's the fun one to deal with. You know, we're all seeing the big impact now. You know, it's a pretty, you know, it, it's hurting pretty big. 40% you know, drop in the price of gas, it's a big impact. And prices go up and down. So the likelihood of bad prices you know, is pretty high. Also the likelihood of good prices is pretty high. Drought, death, you know, pretty high risk. You know, devastating things. My wife had this on Facebook and you know, just think it back to our farming days. Yeah. One of the ways to stay married is just you know, don't work out. Lindsay, you can you can argue to this, can't you? <laughs> Uh, well, maybe it's more sorting cattle. Yeah, never sort cattle with your wife. <laughs> I can sort cattle with Lindsay, but I don't. Things always seem to go haywire. So, so there are strategies to minimize some of these things. You know, like every risk can be managed. You know, death. Here's the ideas I've got for minimizing those risks. And they're just a few things. Everybody will have different things. You know, healthy living. Insurance, you know, divorce of the next generation, solid prenuptial, uh, lawyers. Yeah. Which kind of reminds me of another story. You know, we got our whole farm paid for, the whole farm's paid for this, this farm. You know, two sons, one son, well, two kids. We won't be gender neutral here. You know, two kids. And uh, the kids are taking over the farm. And uh, the one kid is, is married. You know, got grandkids. Anybody here have grandkids? Yeah, you must have. Yeah, aren't they precious? Yeah. All right, you love them to death. So, okay, so here's the, the farm manager and his wife saying, okay, we're going to roll this over to you. The one uh, son or daughter moves into the farmhouse. Okay, well, well, traditional farmhouse, 100 years old. Life goes on good for four or five years, get a bunch of little grandkids running around, and you know, life's good. All of a sudden, that marriage goes sideways. No, well, they got a prenuptial agreement. Yeah, sure they do. But uh, they don't know any money. Gets ugly, and finally your, your own son or daughter moves out, leaves that in-law child in, in your heritage house. How likely is it to happen? It can. So what, do you, what, what good is that prenuptial agreement? Because things get nasty, you know? and all of a sudden, well, she's not or he's not moving out of the house because holding up the grandkids is a uh, is, uh, hostage. You know? There's more stress from that than there is financial stress. So you got to think about these things when you do your family planning. It's it's, it's a risk. You know? Having a prenuptial agreement you know, may not be. You know, there's, there's more to it than just legal stuff. Anyway, that's just a aside. Just the key point is you need to keep looking at the stuff, keep talking about it, and include the whole organization, the whole family, your staff, the family, everybody. You know, other things, of course, unexpected price drop. That's the fun stuff. Futures, options. You know, we can we can help mitigate some of that risk, short term anyway. You know, we still got a problem with long term risk management, but we can reduce some of it. So anyway. I've kind of added a little bit of bullshit here, but the idea is to move those high-risk things up in the red area down into uh, something we can live with, something that's within our risk tolerance, something that keeps us in business. And uh, that's, that's really the nuts of it. It's just reducing those things down systematically and uh, talking about them. Key part of the business plan, you know, everybody, Talks about a risk management plan, but and everything is different. But just going through this process, simple: identify, assess, do this. And uh, I think the bankers in the room would understand that you understand your own business if you go through a process like this. So I've talked about some, the negative side, you know, all those bad things that can happen. You know, do the same thing on the positive side. You know, I'm getting old. I don't see the opportunities that, that the next generation does. 
List the opportunities. You know, how big are they? You know, Droughton, Australia. You know, is that a risk or an opportunity? Well, it's, it's an opportunity for us. Does it affect my price? Maybe, maybe not. You know, around the world, there's all kinds of opportunities. Go through the same process. And instead of finding ways to mitigate those risks, you know, we want strategies to exploit the opportunities. Same process. And this all feeds back into your business plan, the strategic part of your business plan. Go through the process. Continually go through the process. You know. Identify an, op an opportunity to uh, you know, market your product differently. You know. Write it down. Talk about it with the kids. You know. The whole enterprise-wide you know, ideas are good. Us crotchety old men often don't see these things. So Anyway, that's basically what I wanted to say. So hopefully uh, you've got a little bit of an idea of a framework that just might help you with your business planning going forward. You know, a bit of a framework for doing that written business plan. And uh, keep in mind, it's, it's the opportunities too. It's not, it's not all about the negative stuff. You know, for every downturn in the market, there's, there's one that goes up. So. Keep watching those. Um, I know it's a real quick overview, but here's my contact information. Call me if we want to get into more of it. Um, yeah, we can really get into this stuff in detail. The other thing I wanted to mention is uh, November 1st, Farm Management Canada just announced a new online risk management course. And I don't have all the information. Rick just sent me the press release the other day. So if you're interested in learning more about risk management, there is that course, Farm Management Canada, FMC. And Rick, you might have more information on that or not. I'm going to use the risk card and I sent it to the expert. Well, okay, I saw it and I read it on my, on my iPhone. And it looks really good. Those guys do a good job. It's the Farm Management Canada and their Farm, farm Learning Centre. Yep. It's a great source of uh, information for your risk management planning. So, with that, is any comments or to put everybody to sleep? <laughs>